All right. So layers in AutoCAD, what it means is uh, you, you can be having a drawing or a complete like structure or building, but the similar elements can be drawn on their different layers. Like the doors can be on their own layer, the windows can be on their own layer, uh, the walls can be on their own layer, the center line. Yeah, so you apply similar properties to a, to a particular layer, like a layer has properties. So those properties are shared by elements on all that layer. Yeah, and also something else you should know that on one drawing, which has been drawn from different layers, you're able to turn on and off certain layers. Yeah, so you can see one drawing, but when it is in, in on different layers, but for you, the way you look at it, you may think it is on the same ground or like it is on all the same layer. Yeah, so layers just help us to organize, for example, having different colors for, for certain elements on a, on a layer. Then also like having a, uh, being able to turn them on and off so that we, we concentrate on certain features or elements. Yeah, for example, if I see a drawing and at that moment in time, I don't want to look at the dimensions. If dimensions are on their own layer, I can turn off dimensions and I concentrate on what I want to see. Yeah, then if you have everything on the same layer, it will be very hard for you to go about that. Yeah. So we're going to see how do you use layers. Let me first show you a sample of uh, like a drawing which are on different layers. I'm just going to draw something small. Yeah, like if I have a circle, uh, this is, let me draw two circles. Then I draw two rectangles. Yeah, so now if I go to layer properties, let me, let me just create here something very fast, but I'm going to, to repeat it again. Yeah, so if I move these objects to a different layer, all these one first see, I'm going to repeat all of them. I just want you to first understand it very well. I appreciate it. Sparkles. Now we said drawing like this, it has been drawn on different layers. Like there are, it, it, there are two layers here. Actually there are three, but now I've created two and I've moved circles to their own layer and also the rectangles on their own layer. Yeah, so from here, I can come and, uh, okay, this is abstracting. Okay, I can come here and I let me turn off and I say, I don't want to look at circles. I turn them off. I say, I don't want to look at rectangles. I turn them off. But when I turn everything back on, it looks to be the same drawing. And indeed it is the same draw, drawing, just that you have different layers. Yeah, so. That's how layers work. So we're going to see how do you create a new layer? How do you modify? How do you delete? How do you turn on and off? Yeah. Okay. Hope it is clear. Is it clear? Ibrin, is it clear? Okay. All right. So layers. How do you create a new layer? You click on layer properties then you get a dialogue like this. 
Yeah, yours will not be, let me first delete it. Yeah, so it will be like this, layer properties, you won't find zero layer only. So by default, AutoCAD puts everything on zero layer. So it's the default layer which is built there. It comes with it. So even if you say, I'm not going to use layers, you've used, but you've just used one layer, the one which is in building AutoCAD called zero layer. In case I want to create a new layer, I click on this icon. Then I give that layer a name. Yeah, so we can have a layer. Let's just create this just for understanding. We can have a layer for circles. Let's create another one for rectangles. Then we create another one and it's going to have dimensions. Dimensions. Then, uh, yeah, those ones are enough for illustration. Meaning we're going to have a drawing, but circles are going to be on their own layer. Rectangles are going to be on their own layer. And dimensions are going to be on their own layer. Yeah. What else can you change? You can change the color. For example, circles, I don't need the white color. I need a different color. Maybe you need blue. And you say, okay. Then you go to rectangles, which color do you need? It can be green. Uh, dimensions, which color do you want? It can be red. What kind of dark red, something like that. Yeah, so after modifying the, the colors, Another thing you can modify is the line types. Yeah, so with line type, we have a continuous line. Then also we can have a dash line. Yeah, so by default, everything comes with a continuous line. So when you click on this, you see that there's just one continuous solid line. If you want to, to have a look at different lines, you click on dot, then you get different lines here. Okay, so, okay, so in case you want to use that one, you change from highlighting this to this one. And you place okay. Yeah, so. Let's continue. We've seen how you can change the, the line type. Just click on line type. Then you'll be able to see how many the different lines that you loaded. This one comes by default, but you can load more lines. Maybe you want this, click OK. And place OK. So when you come to line, you can change from this to any other. Yeah. Then another one is line weight. Line, line weight means uh, how thick the line is. So if you click on line weight, you're going to see different millimeters. There is one that comes in by default. Then here there are different, different millimeters of thickness and can go up to 2.11. Yeah. So if you adjust this, then if I put it to 2.11, you won't be able to see the effect in the model space as you draw it. You can only see the effect when you print out. That's where you can see the effect. But for now, I'm going to leave default. And then the next one is about transparency. That one you can leave it. Others you can leave it by default. Now we don't want uh, anything transparent. It is okay. Yeah. So. After creating the layers, now we come to, to draw to do the drawings. Before you do any drawings, it's better you create your own your layers, then you start drawing. Yeah. So if I want to, if I want to draw circles, I know that I'm going to draw on circles layer, but I'm still on layer zero. So I have to change from layer zero to circles. Like that. 
So now that means I'm going to be drawing circles. I click on the circle and I come and draw. Can get another one. Yeah, then I have my circles. So the layer is called circles, but that is just a name. Even if you get a rectangle, you can draw it. Like the software cannot warn you. It's about you to ensure that you only draw circles there. But that was just an example to name it circles. But in real drawings, it will be like center line, doors, windows. So then I'm done with drawing circles. Now I'm going to go, I'm going to draw rectangles. I change to that layer, then I draw. Yeah, you can see that they are adopting the colors that we set. So in case you, you're on a different layer, for example, I'm on, I'm on zero layer and I draw a circle. But I realize this circle is supposed to be on circles layer. You just click in it, then right click and go to its properties. Then under its properties, you look for layer. And you, you change it from zero layer to the layer that you want, like circles. Yeah, so you don't see that it's going to adopt the color of that layer. Because the, the color is something which we can easily identify on because they have different colors. Yeah, so after that, we can go to dimensions. I need to dimension this. I also need to indicate radius. May indicate to, I may need to indicate diameter. Yeah. Angular, I can, I can do the angles too. Yeah, so you can see here is my drawing. This drawing is on different layers. So if I decide that I don't want to look at dimensions, uh, you just come and turn off the dimensions layer. But before you turn it off, you have to ensure that the layer that you're turning off is not the current layer. Like it's on the, the current layer will always be shown here. So in case you want to turn off dimensions, go to a different layer other than dimensions, then you turn off dimensions. If you don't do that, the, the software will warn you and you may actually lose some more. Like if I try to turn off this, say, to, say the current layer will be turned off. What do you want to do? Turn the current layer off or keep the current layer on? Yeah. So here, if you turn it off and you still stay on the same layer which is turned off, the objects you create will not be recorded in, any, in that layer. That's why it is not good to turn off the layer that, you, that is the current layer. You, you just have to get another layer, then now you can turn off another one. For example, we change to zero layer, then we come and turn off the layer. So they can turn the numbers. Yeah, same thing to circles. They can be turned on and off. Also rectangles, they all can be turned on and off. Other things you can do on a day. Uh, you can, you can lock a layer. 
what does it mean? If you lock a layer, it means that they are, it's not going to receive more like adjustments. Let's lock the blue layer. It's locked. We go back and we change the circles, then let's try to. Okay. It went out. Yeah, you see. That was a long time ago. Listen. It will try to show you that the layer yeah. you're trying to adjust or to work on is locked. Yeah. But you can lock it so that uh, so that no more adjustments can be made on it. Let's try to see. Okay, but uh, in most of the cases, you, you don't need to turn to like lock them. You just need either to turn them on and off. Those are the most uh, features you'll be using. Then another feature is called freezing. Yeah, freezing and turning on and off, they, they are the same. Okay, they are not exactly the same, but what it means is that uh, if you freeze a layer, the layer will stay there, but it will not be visible. Okay, like you can't do anything on it, but when you turn it off, it's like you've, you've gone and totally switched it off. But the one for freezing just freezes it. Yeah, so here in the visual representation, you can't see the difference, but the software takes it in a different way. But it is better you just turn off the layer instead of freezing it. But freezing works the same way. Then this one. What is the one time? Can I, can I freeze all oh, in a uh, viewport. Uh, we've not covered viewports, but they are in layouts. So in case you have like three layouts and those three layouts you have different viewports. If you freeze the layer, if you say freeze the layer throughout the viewports, it gets turned off in all the viewports. Yeah, but if you just turn it off, it will just turn off from the model space and also in the viewport you can't see. It. So it's like freezing, but now this one applies to viewport. But also this one is rarely used. Then another one, you can delete, you can delete a new any layer. If let me say, let me create this and say for the, to be deleted. I want to delete, I click on this, then to be gone. But in case it has objects that are on that layer, it will warn you. Because it will, it will be going with those objects. Let me make it current. When I go back, layer properties, and I say I want to delete this layer. So the selected layer was not deleted to give you reasons. And uh, layers that are inbuilt, like layer zero and X points, if it is a current layer, it can be deleted. A layer containing objects, they can be deleted. Then X left dependent layers. X left means uh, external references. If you've imported, if you've imported the uh, other AutoCAD drawings into your new drawing, those will be like external references. But external references, what they have is, if I import an external drawing, I can't modify it from here, where I've imported it. It can only be modified from its uh, like parent document, ODWG. And the moment it is modified from there, the changes reflect here, where you're working from, where you imported it from. So those are external references. So layers that have external references cannot be deleted. Layers that are current, also layers that have objects. Because when, when they are deleted, you lose also your objects. Also, a current layer can't be deleted. So you have to first sync to another layer when you, you try to delete it. Yeah, so. Yeah, that's about layers. Is there any question?
Do you have any questions? No. Okay. Do you have any questions? Yeah, so in every drawing, we, you're going to be drawing from today, you'll be using layers. Uh, the most common layers you'll be using, a title block should be on its own layer. Then in case you're doing like a floor plan, the walls, doors, windows, all those ones should have their own layers. But now it, it, it depends on what you draft in. Yeah, but it is easier to come up with a, those are kind of like groups. You can easily know that these ones will share the same properties. Then you make, you may, you turn them to B. You make a layer for them and you put them on the same yeah. So let, let's look at blocks. Okay, a block. A block is an element that you can modify. Then those modifications will be showed in two the like the child elements. So it will act as like a parent element. For example, if I have a circle and I make it a block, I can insert the same circle anywhere in my model space or on my drawing. So in case I want to change the radius of that circle, I'll just go to that block, like the parent uh, block I made, I adjust the radius and that will reflect everywhere where I have that particular block. Yeah, so it's like copying, but when you copy and paste, if you change, if you change like the parent judgment or the parent element, the changes are not going to reflect to the child element. Yeah, but for blocks, the changes is yeah. So let's let's see how you can use blocks. For blocks, you come to blocks group or panel here. Yeah, so it will have create block. Yeah, so in order for you to create a block, you should have uh, an object that you're going to turn into a block. In this case, we're going to use a circle. If I have a circle on this corner and I want to put more circles on different, on the three corners that don't have circles. I can copy and paste, but now we're going to use blocks. Yeah, so this is, this is what I want to turn into a block. I click on create block. Then it will ask you for a block name. Yeah, so I'm going to call it circles or circle, just a circle. Then when you open it for the first time, these ones will not be checked. They specify on the screen and the, the base point and also objects. They will not be, they will not be checked. Yeah. But the base point, we're going to see what the base point is. Yeah, so it's better you specify on the screen than putting in the coordinates. We're going to specify on the screen. Then also objects, I'm going to specify on, on screen. I'm not going to select like from, uh, this would bring like a, a dialogue where you can select from different existing objects, like here. All this, this will take you to select the objects, eh? like straight out. Yeah. But we want to go back and I say I will specify on screen. Or you can go directly and you, you select the object that you want to use. Then you press enter. And so we've already selected the object. So you see specify on the screen becomes grayed, meaning it's not active. Yeah, but it will be the same thing as specifying on screen. Those specifying on screen was going to happen after me pressing OK. Yeah. Then the other changes that we can make is uh, here. Like, do you want to retain the object? Do you want to convert that block object into a block? Or do you want to delete the object into a block? If you retain, it means that it's going to stay as a normal object, but it's not going to act as a block. 
if you convert it into a block, it also going to turn into a block in that in case anything has been changed in a block editor, block editor is the one that fits the block. It will also be changed. Yeah. Or you can decide to delete. You delete the object, but now when you've turned it into a block. But let's first see the one of convert to a block. So we're going to convert it into a block. Then you can give a description. See your circle. And then the units, I'm not going to change because uh, I've not been setting units. So I'll leave them to inches the way they are. Then you can even give a hyperlink, but we're not going to. Yeah, then there's what they call a block editor. We won't see it. In case you want to a block to be immediately edited into a block editor, you check this open block editor. But for this, we can leave it now. We say okay. Then it is asking us for insertion base point. So this one means if I click here, around here, every time I'm inserting a block, it will it will refer to that distance. Okay, you won't see. If I click in the center of the circle, and that is my my base point, I press OK. Now, when I come to insert, I'm going to find that block. Previously, it wasn't there. So I can click. If I want to insert a block, I click the name of the block. Now you see that plus sign. It is, come, it is showing in the middle because I chose the middle, the center of the circle to be at this point. In case I've chosen a distance, Apart, let me show you this. So create on screen. Okay, rectangle. You you watch this distance. I've not yet clicked. Eh? I want to click uh, the base point, but I've given it like one bar, one column in a grid. So I click here. That is my base point. So let me try to insert that block. See the way it comes with a cursor. It comes when it is off by that distance. Yeah, so that's why they call a base distance or a base point. Okay, let's go back. So I have my circle, which is a, which is a block, and I want to replicate it in, on two different corners. So I'll come to insert. I select it, then I put it here. I go to insert again. Select it, click here. Yeah, so I'm done making duplicates. Now, in case I want to change like the radius or color of this block, just double click. If it is a block, it will bring for you this dialog. Then click OK. Then this is what they call a block editor. Yeah, so from the block editor, I want to change the, the color of the circle. So I'll come to home. I've turned it in trade. Then also, Let me try to draw a line into the circle when it has a white line, a white color. There's no problem with that. Yeah, so I can even scale it down in case I want to, to reduce. If this is the best point. Yeah, 
Yeah, so when you're done editing that block, click on cross block editor. Yeah, so it will ask you whether you want to save changes to, to the circle, which is our book. And now you can see. See that the changes are reflected everywhere. Yeah. And even the, the size has reduced. So let, let's demonstrate uh, deleting and retaining a block. So if I want to retain this, the object that I the object that I'm specifying, I want to retain it. I don't want to convert it to a block. Come select objects, then I I'm done selecting the object, but we said we want to retain it, and I click OK. Then insertion points, I'll use that. So when I come to insert a block, this. This was retained. So let me try to double click on this. See, it is not bringing the block down. So it's not a block, it's just a normal object. But let's double click on this one. For this one, it's a block. Yeah, so which can be edited. Okay, now let's demonstrate another one. The one for delete. So we want to delete our object, but when it has made blocks for us. Yeah, so see it has disappeared, it has, it has been deleted, but when I come to insert block, I'll find it, it is just two. And I can insert it. Yeah, that's how blocks work. If you want to delete, Want to delete a certain uh, block? You can double click on one of them. No, it's not I'll show you how, how we delete it. Yeah, you just have to come to block editor. Okay, let's first leave that one. Shall I try it? Okay. So that's about blocks. Now in AutoCAD, it comes with uh, some inbuilt blocks that are inbuilt there. For example, the fittings within the house for like the interior, it, it, it tends to come with some, and also the ones for plumbing, there are very many. But where do you find them? You find them in AutoCAD Design Center. It's called Design Center. So you can type in the command AD Center, that one. Yeah, so it will open 
this is the auto autocad autodesk design center so they are drawings but within the drawings they have blocks so you you can say that uh, i want to look at drainage i want to get um blocks that fall under drainage so i can come to drainage i just double click then i open blocks then you find blocks about drainage uh, that one doesn't have a lot. Let's look at uh, yeah. For for every every drawings you open, you get different blocks. Like if I go to architectural, then I. I choose one of the drawings and I load the blocks which are there. You may find that there is wall number, there is drawing title. So if I want to use it, I double click, then I get this dialog. If you can't see the, these drawings, uh, their location is in, let me show you here where they are located. Let me first share this. Now, can you see the screen? The can you see the, the dialogue, the file explorer? I want to show where, where the, the design center is located. You go to local disk C. OK, you go to, to your partition where Windows were installed. Then you check under program files, and you look for Autodesk. Then you look for your AutoCAD version. In this case, I have 2018. So I open AutoCAD 2018. Then you can check in this called uh, sample. Then under sample, you check under ENUS. Then you find design center. So these are the drawings that have blocks. So when you come here, when you come to this dialogue, and you can see those drawings. Just follow the same path. Program files, Autodesk, Autocad 2018. We look for sample. Then ENUS, Design Center. Then you're going to get your drawings. Yeah. So. When you do it like this here, actually, you get very, you get more drawings. For example, if you want uh, some fittings for a teacher, you, you click there, click blocks, then you're going to find the base cabin, the dishwasher, what, what, all of them. You find them, so you don't need to draw them, just double click on one, like I want to insert a microwave. So specify on the screen, then leave, leave its name for easy identification. Then rotation, we don't need to rotate. Oh, I press OK. Then I would, it will take me to screen where I should put it. So I click, then I'm able to. OK, let me just insert it. Then I'm going to just scale it down. Let me repeat it again. I'm going to open ADC, ADC Center. Then I look for microwave, double click on it. Yeah. 
then here you can say uniform scale that's okay then you can see that i have i have the microwave on the cast so i can click anywhere i want to place it in a building that use the small you just place and now you can scale it down and up and down by moving the cast like that so that's that's how you can use the autocad design center you don't need to to draw your own maybe you have a bedroom and you want to show the bed they come in built you don't have to to draw them just come type abc open autocad design center then you you come from you, you come to different drawings and you can see you will be able to know where it falls there is home and house so under home when you click on blocks see there is chair there's computer terminal there is copy machine uh, for example i want to insert maybe a bed just double click on it it's okay then it will prompt you where I want to insert it. Scale, you can say one, then you have your, you have the bed here. If it is big, you can select, then you scale, you type in scale. Best point can be at any of the edges. So this is what they call scaling, reducing and also increasing. So in case you want to reduce on the size, it means your scale factor should be less than one. If you want it to be exactly the same size, it will be one. If you want it to be more than that, it will be more than one. Like if you want to double it, the score factor will be two. But in case you want just halfway, it will be 0 0.5. Like that. That's how they scale. They scale. So I want it halfway, 0 0.5. Yeah, like that. Then you're able to drag or move and put it where you want to put it in your floor plan. Yeah. So that's how you can use blocks and uh, AutoCAD Design Center. Any questions about blocks? Do you have any questions? Can you repeat it a bit? The design center? Yeah. Okay. For AutoCAD design center, like when you install AutoCAD, it comes with sample drawings. And within the sample drawings, they have blocks that are located within those drawings. So if you want to use those blocks, you go to AutoCAD Design Center. How do you access it? You type in ADC, like as a command, ADC. Then you see ADC, ADC Center, the like AutoCAD Design Center, open it. So if you open it and you, you're not seeing these drawings, like here, it may open when you're not seeing the drawings. That will be okay, just go to, a disk you see i'm on this pc then you go to that disk where your windows are installed in most of the cases it will be local disk PC. then you you go to program files then look for autodesk then look for your autocad version may have 2018 then after that look for a folder called sample then from sample, you click on ENUS. Then you find design center. So it is this design center that has these are the drawings. In case I want you to put uh, mechanical fittings or electrical fittings, I click on electrical. Then when I click on blocks, I'm going to find symbols which are already there. Mm. Like I can find the fuses already there, the breaker, the generator. 
yeah the transformer delta everything now if i if i want uh, something to do with the uh, with with uh, like mechanical i may find them here leaking blocks then you see that you, you find like air injector condenser heat unit mixing box valve thermometer steam turbine all of those ones so if you want to insert one like i want to insert uh, a refrigerator just double click then you get this dialogue. We already looked at this dialogue when we are creating our own blocks. Press OK. Then you go to the screen and click your insertion point. Then you give in a factor. If you don't want factor, it, leave it to one, then you can scale it down later on. Yeah, so I already have it here. When I come to insert blocks here, I will only see the ones I created by myself. Yeah, but in case you've used some from the AutoCAD Design Center, they will be brought closer to you. Like we've already used the bed, the refrigerator, and the microwave. So they will be added to a list of recent blocks. Yeah, so you can easily insert another one. Is it clear now? Yeah. yeah. You can't see the block. You click on insert block. Do you see it being listed there? Okay, let me repeat once, just once again for making blocks. If you want to make blocks, create an object that you want to make a block, like this circle. I want to make it a block. Go to create. Don't go to insert, go to create. Give it a name. Like that. Then, for base point, just say specify on screen so that you just go and click instead of using the coordinate, the coordinates. Yeah. Then for objects, you can click here and you go direct and select. Or you can specify on the screens later. But this one I think works better. Click on the object that you want to select, press enter. Yeah. So we're done on selecting the object. Then another thing is this, do you want to retain that object? Do you want to convert to a block or to delete it? I can say convert to a block or I can say delete. Okay, yeah. So I press okay. Then it's going to ask me for insertion base point. Yeah, so I'm going to specify the center, but you can specify anywhere. I said it is just the distance as you bring in the the block. So I'm going to use this. Then now, since I, I was using delete, it deleted the, like, the parent object. Yeah. So now, if I want to insert that block, I come to insert, then it will be listed. It's called circle. Circle two, then you're able to, to insert it in. Yeah, so we're just going to cover one more thing. That is uh, grouping. Yes, grouping is grouping objects. For example, if you're creating a door, a door symbol, you're going to use different lines. But after that, you want to treat it as a one object, like as a door, as a full door. You don't want to treat it in different lines. Yeah, so let me create a symbol for it. I can start with uh, this. I can get it this.
Yeah, we already covered all these modification tools. I'm just trying to come up with a symbol for that book. Like that. So now this is our symbol for that book. But you can see when I got select, it is just uh, like there are different lines. Eh? Yet I want to treat it as a single object. So what I will do, I select all of it. Then I come to group. See, group. Then when I go to select, it is treated as one object. Yeah. So in case you want to ungroup, right click, go to group, then ungroup. Yeah. In case maybe you have another line, want to add it to a group. In case you want to, like you want to add maybe a line down here to that group, you select a group, the existing group, right click go to group then go to add to group then it will ask you to select objects to be added to a group select and press end so when i go it is part of that group and one group right click group and group Yeah, so any questions about groups? It is after where you see much properties here. Around it. On the home tab. Yes. Is it clear? Pardon? It's clear, yeah. Okay. Yeah, so on those ones that we, we've covered today, is there any that you would like me to repeat again? Layers, we've covered layers. Um, we've covered blocks. And also we've covered groups. Let me hope they are all clear. They just need now, it just needs you to practice them out. Practice, yeah. When you practice, then you'll be able to know where you're getting lost from. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Do you have any other question? Even if it's not, a, it's not about this class, if you have any question from what we covered in the previous classes. For now, I don't have maybe next week you will be able to practice during the weekends. And then mm -hmm. I see the areas where I'm stuck. I'll be able to tell you where I'm stuck. Okay. Yeah, so now since you